Yo, what's going on, Fun Orange Nation? Hey guys, uh, so I got my 3D printer to play Osu. Pretty cool, huh? Before I show you how I got this to work, I want to talk about this tablet. So around a year ago, I bought a graphics tablet to write notes for school. I mean, it's not like I had any plans to switch a tablet for Osu or anything, but uh, for whatever reason, I wanted a tablet that was also decent enough to play Osu with. So a popular one that gets recommended a lot is the XP Pen G640. So I bought it, gave it a try, and it kinda sucked. I I'm not even a tablet player, and yet I could clearly tell that something was off. So it turns out that at some point, XP Pen changed the internals of their tablet to have a lower polling rate and built-in input smoothing at the hardware level, meaning that it couldn't be disabled. Not only that, but they made absolutely no indication of the change in the tablet's model name, or the store page, or anywhere for that matter. So this kind of sucked. I spent $56 on a tablet that I thought I could use to play Osu, and the built-in smoothing kind of makes it unplayable. Luckily, Gaumon reached out to me and sent me a free tablet for review. This is the Gaumon S620, and they specifically told me that it was designed with Osu players in mind. Taking a quick look at the specs, we can see that it has a high polling rate of 300Hz and zero input smoothing. Oh, what the? <laughs> kind of cool. Now we're gaming. When the gaming gets serious. The pen is also what you want for Osu. It requires no batteries and as a result it's lightweight at around 12 grams and also has good weight balance with the center of mass being just slightly towards the tip of the pen. Oh this feels really nice. There's like a rubberized texture uh, where the grip is. I, I really like that. Wow. Yeah there's no way this pen is slipping. That's really cool. So on paper, this sounds like it should be a great tablet for Osu. And after giving it a try, I can basically confirm that, yeah, it's really good. So yeah, thanks Gaumon. If you want to get this tablet, check out the links in the description. It's actually really cheap right now because there's a promo going on, but it's only for this week. Using the links will also support this channel. Uh, so with that said, I think for this video, I'm going to try to tape this tablet to my 3D printer and then get it to play Osu. So let's just get right into it! So getting a 3D printer to play Osu might sound like a daunting task at first, but I'd like to explain my thought process for how I went about solving this problem. At a very high level, the problem basically boils down to getting cursor movement data from the game and then transforming that data into instructions that my 3D printer could understand. I thought about where I could get this cursor movement data, and I came up with the idea of using Osu replay files. So I would play a map, press F2 to save the replay, and then I'd have the replay saved as an OSR file. So with that piece figured out, let's turn our attention to the 3D printer. 3D printers accept instructions using a file format called G-Code. Turns out that it's just a text file with a bunch of basic instructions, and when the printer reads the file, it just executes each instruction line by line, from top to bottom, until the print is finished. The way instructions are encoded is also pretty straightforward as well. The beginning of the line always indicates what type of instruction it is, and everything after is just parameters for that instruction. G-Code apparently has hundreds of instructions defined in the specification, as well as vendor-specific instructions that allow for custom behaviors on some 3D printers. But as it turns out, the only one I care about is G1. Move the print nozzle to an X and Y coordinate on the print bed, and move it this fast. So my plan at this point was to write a Python script to convert the cursor movement data stored in a replay file, and then convert that into a bunch of G1 commands. So in order to do that, I had to understand how Osu stores replay data inside OSR files. So let's try opening up a replay file in Notepad. So after looking at it for about 5 seconds, I decided to read up on the Osu wiki to learn about the OSR file format. The data stored in the OSR file is in binary format, so it makes no sense to open it up in Notepad. Instead, you're supposed to read the data byte by byte, and to demonstrate this, I've opened it up in a hex editor where I can do that. So according to the Osu wiki, the first byte should indicate the game mode for the replay. As you can see, it's 0, which represents Osu standard. Then the next 4 bytes represent the version of the Osu client that was used when the replay was created. And we can see that here. And the rest of the file is basically encoded in a similar manner. The part that I need, the actual replay data, is apparently encoded in a compressed file format called LZMA, or Lempel Ziv Markov Chain Algorithm. This is a pretty popular compression algorithm, and if you've ever used 7-Zip before, 
then you've used this algorithm to compress your files. So after studying computer engineering for four years, I really didn't want to learn anymore. And I ended up just googling Python Osu Replay Reader, and I copy pasted the starting code on the GitHub README. And within minutes, I was able to open the OSR file and peek at what kind of information was stored inside it. I was pretty happy to find that the replay data is extremely simple and easy to work with. It's just an array of data points, where each data point contains the cursor's x and y position and the time between the last data points before it. The thing I was happy about is how closely the replay data resembles G1 commands. The only difference is that for the replay data, the time since the previous snapshot is given, and for the G1 command, I need to specify the travel speed. The speed can easily be worked out with some simple high school math. Speed is equal to distance divided by time. The replay file already gives us time, so we just need to calculate the distance. And to do that, we take two cursor positions, form a right triangle, and then use the Pythagorean theorem. So it wasn't too hard to write the code for that. I also had to do multiple coordinate transforms, from OSU coordinates to tablet coordinates to print bed coordinates, which is really annoying to work out, but I eventually got it done. But wait! What about tapping? You ask. No, I'm not doing that. That's way too hard. I already spent enough time on this video already. <laughs> So with the script done, it was time to test it out. I thought about starting with something simple, and so I decided to use my one miss SS choke on this random 8 star jump map. So I converted that replay to G code, and I tried printing it. So yeah, needless to say, it didn't really work. The most obvious problem I could see is that it was moving too slow. I think I overestimated the travel speed of the printer, and so to overcome this, I decided to use as small of a tablet area as possible, so it wouldn't have to move around that much. I think the reason why it was so slow is that I was feeding it movements translated straight from the replay data, meaning that all of the instructions were basically just move a tiny amount and I expect you to run each instruction in 16 milliseconds. And maybe it's too ambitious to think that the printer can execute instructions at 60 hertz. I think it needs time to fetch, process, and execute each instruction and maybe that's why it's running so slow. But regardless of whatever the actual explanation is, I realized that I couldn't use replay data and that I would have to change my approach. So instead of using replay data, I decided to just use beatmap files instead. These would give me the coordinates of each hit object, and instead of one instruction every 16 milliseconds, each instruction would just move from one hit object to the next. Because I was lazy, I just decided to ignore the movement for sliders for now. So yeah, here's what that looks like. So this was clearly a lot better, but it was far from perfect. Even though the speed values should theoretically be consistent, some parts were just playing way too fast, while other parts were playing too slow. That's when I began to realize that 3D printers have absolutely no perception of time. When you think about it, 3D printers are used to make things, and so it needs to be able to trace out paths with micrometer level precision in order to get the part to come out dimensionally accurate. As for timing, the printer doesn't care how many milliseconds it consumes between instructions. Sure, there's a speed parameter for the G1 command, but that's just a vague suggestion telling it to go faster or slower, with absolutely no guarantees as for how long the movements will take. So realizing this, I figured that my last resort would be to edit the G code by hand to get the timing correct. The method I ended up going with is to move the print head at maximum speed to the next circle, and then tell it to wait some time before moving on. The wait duration would have to be manually tweaked for every single circle. And so that's what I did. After 10 hours of hard work, 
Here is A Full Moon Night, played by a 3D printer. Now, I know what you're all thinking. Where does this fit into the Osu playstyle tier list? F tier. This thing sucks, dude. I spent like 10 hours trying to get it to play 2 minutes of Full Moon Night. Not even the whole map, just 2 minutes. I, I tried my hardest to get the code to be close to as perfect as possible, and even when I was confident with the code, uh, the timing was still super RNG. So I would run the, the exact same map like 5 different times with the exact same code and only one of them would make it to the end. And that's because the timing was just super RNG. Yeah, like some runs would just go way too fast or way too slow with the exact same code running on the printer. Yeah, because of that, like for the Full Moon Night clip that you just saw, I had to split the map into segments and then splice them together post-processing. Because getting the printer to be on time for two minutes straight is like a one in a million chance. So yeah, <laughs> this thing sucks, dude. I'm never doing this again. F tier. Horrible. Final range from the future here. This project was actually pretty cool. The only reason I was saying that is because I was hella tired after finally finishing Project LMAO. That said, I think this will go into idea if someone could make it work automatically without any work required. Maybe someone could redo this project, but instead use computer vision where 3D printer reacts to what's on screen rather than have everything scripted beforehand. But I'm done with this project for now. <clears throat> so anyway, thanks for watching this video. Once again, if you want to buy this tablet, make sure you use the links in the description. Alright, later.